Stephanie of Stephanie Stitches here. Welcome to my channel where together we sew. If you're brand new here, welcome. I'm glad to have you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and ring the bell for notifications. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. And if you're not new here, welcome back. I'm glad to see you. So this week is Fort Worth Fabric Studios Dark Flight Mystery Quilt week number three. The first week was the pumpkin and the second week was the log cabin blocks and it's called Dark Flight. So you knew there had to be bat somewhere in there, right? <laughs> so this is bat week. <laughs> so we have two bats to make this week. We have bat A and bat B, and then you can see them both on the wall behind me. We need to make four of each block. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got all my pieces laid out for bat A. So let's start with that one. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to set aside the pieces that we don't need right now, which is this big, long piece, this black piece. We're going to need one of these background and the two black squares. And we're going to need three of the black rectangles. And two of the background squares for that one and one for each of these. And then I'll show you what we're gonna do with those here in just a minute. And then I'm gonna set the rest of this stuff aside for now. Okay, so if you follow the directions in step one, we're going to turn this guy into a flying geese with the black squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can either draw a line from corner to corner, or if you have uh, the seam guide tape on your machine, that'll work and you won't have to draw some lines, but you're gonna start in the left-hand corner and go down to the right-hand corner towards the center. I'm gonna do that first. ruler and we are going to trim this a quarter inch away from that line and give this a press the first wing of your flying geese We're gonna do the other side. Same thing. We're gonna sew from the top or from the corner to corner, but this time we're gonna start in the top right hand corner and go to the bottom left hand corner. Now we're going to be making four of the A bats, so you're going to want to do this four times. I'm just going to show you one today, and you can do all the rest on your own. So there's one unit of the block done, and we're going to do the same thing with the black and then the white background squares. So we're going to make another flying geese unit. Same process. Trim 
trim away a quarter inch again. same to this side start in the upper right hand corner this time and sew to the bottom left hand corner Give that one a press. And again, make four of these to do all four of your bat A's. All right, so those are done. Now we're gonna take these black rectangles and we're going to add pieces on the sides just like we do for the flying geese and we're gonna do them opposite one here and one here. So we're not make, quite making a full flying geese. So those are opposite, and I'm going to trim those away. Okay. All right. And now I'm going to give these a press. And now we're going to build the rows of our bet. So the first row is going to be one of the background rectangles. And then we're going to have the black that we just made over here. And then we're going to use the flying geese that we made with the black as the wings and then the other black that we made with the wing so just make sure you pay attention to which order you're putting these in make sure that the background rectangles up here and then the black touches that and the background is down to the lower left and on the side it's down to the lower lower right okay and then we're going to sew a background square to this black strip and another background square. Then we're going to put this guy right in the center, a smaller black strip. We're going to join a background rectangle, another black bleh, background rectangle, black background, they all sound the same. And then finally, our last flying geese that we made, and it's gonna point with the black pointing down. There we go. Background, background, and then that last background strip is gonna go at the bottom. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew all these pieces onto their respective rows and then start putting the rows together. So I'm going to grab these first. one and I'll go back and press those all at the same time in just a minute. And I'm just adding these squares to this black strip. these rectangles to the center rectangle. So I've got all those done. I'm going to press these and then put this bat all together. I'm going to press that black in away from the cream so we don't see that through. These first three rows don't have any seams to match up so um, I think you can press those kind of any way you want. Again with this one I'm pressing the black towards the center. And these are the two rows that you're going to want to nest up. So I pressed that one in, so I'm going to press these ones out towards the cream. Okay, so I'm going to start to sew the rows together. I'm going to start at the bottom and go up. But you can really do this any way you want to.
I'm going to press every row in between here. If I wait till the end, it might get a little funky. Threads all over. <laughs> okay, let me go to the next row. I pressed these in opposite directions so they should nest up. Yep. You can pin there at the intersection if you like. I'm just gonna wing it. Pretty good. Okay. Next row, nothing to match up there, which is nice. Time, there's not a whole lot of seams to match up this real nice. So. Okay, next row, same thing, not really any seams to match, so. This little bat guy, or bat A, is going together fairly quickly, which is nice, since we have four of them to make. block, huh? Just a little, just lots of pieces. But not difficult. Lots of steps to this guy. Okay. Almost there. One more row. Last row is just the last background strip to go on the top here.
All right, just gonna give that a press. I guess this is where the name for our mystery comes in, Dark Flight, because this bat is in flight. <laughs> Okay, so there is bat A. Now let's put together bat B. I've got all the pieces set up for bat B. So let's start by making the first component, which is the background. It's rectangles and the cat squares. Use, use two background uh, four and a half inch rectangles and two of the two and a half inch cat face squares. And we're going to do these again like flying geese, but putting them on opposite corners of each other. Now don't forget we're making four of each of bat A and we're also going to make for a bat B. I'm just showing you one, but you're going to do this four times. So we're going to make sure that they're opposite directions. Okay, so I'm going to set those aside for a minute and get to those cutting and uh, pressing in a minute. I'm going to do all the pieces first and then do all the cutting and pressing at once. So now I'm going to grab, let's see, the black six and a half inch rectangles and a couple of the white background squares. And we're going to do the same thing we just did with the cat. The cat in the background is we're going to put one on each corner and sew them in opposite directions. opposite side. Okay, there's that. And the last component that we need to make is grab your square, your big square of the cat fabric. I think this is four and a half inches, I believe. Yeah, four and a half inches. And then grab a couple of the background squares. And we're going to put one on each corner and draw or sew a line corner to corner. On those. And again, we are going to trim all these and iron them, but I decided to... It was easier to trim them all and then press them all at the same time. Oops. Trim these guys. So I'm going to trim away a quarter inch. And then on these ones as well. Quite cut. 
time for a new blade, I think. Okay. Put that aside for a minute. And I'm going to get these guys a press. Gonna get all these little pieces, parts pressed. And then we'll figure out what goes with what next. These cat faces are really cute. <laughs> I have eyes staring at me. <laughs> okay, one more. All right, so now we have all our units made for one bat block, and so let's start to build this bat. Now, don't forget you're gonna do these times four. I'm just showing you one. Okay, so what it looks like to build this bat, we're going to do it in quadrants. So we're going to start with quadrant one, which is your four and a half inch background square, your two and a half inch cat face square, and then these uh, four and a half inch background squares that have the cat faces on them. So it's going to go just like that. It almost kind of looks like a cat head. <laughs> which will be our bat head, I'm assuming. So, appropriate. So again, doesn't seem like a very difficult block, just a lot of steps. So make sure you follow the steps carefully so you don't miss one. A press. And then I'm going to sew these together. And this is quadrant one. I like how they broke this up into four quadrants. That's kind of neat to build this block. I didn't see any pressing instructions on here, so I would say press it the way you like. I'm going to press this down towards the black square. That is very wet. My pen kind of exploded a little bit. Not exploded, but had too much liquid come out. Okay, so that's quadrant one. So I'm going to set this one up here for a minute, set that aside, and I'm going to make quadrant two. So quadrant two is the six and a half inch black that we put the background square to the upper right. And let's see, we need a black four and a half inch rectangle, a white two or background, I should say it's not white, off white, a background two and a half inch square. And then we need a 
black two and a half inch square and a background four and a half inch rectangle. Phew, excuse me. Okay, I'm going to sew these together. The other thing about these bats so far is that it seems like there's a lot of pieces, but um, there's not a lot of seams to match up, so that definitely makes it easier too. Now we're going to sew these together. Last row of quadrant two. Okay. And it doesn't, as far as I know, yeah, it doesn't say like what order to sew the quadrants together. I mean, one to two and then three to four, of course, but um, if you should do it now or after you finish all the quadrants. So I'm just gonna sew together quadrant one and two right now because we do have so many pieces going on over here. I don't wanna mix them up because it looks like quadrant three and quadrant two are similar but opposite. So I don't wanna get them in the wrong place. So I'm going to go ahead and then put quadrant run and quadrant two together. So we have half a bat done, yay! <laughs> He's got a head and a wing. So there's, turn him around, there's part of our bat. So I'm gonna put that guy aside up here and I'm gonna make quadrant three, which will be the other wing. So we need to grab the other black with the cream that's in the opposite direction. And then we need to grab a cream and a black rectangle, and then a black square, and a cream rectangle. Okay, so put these together. And put these together basically the same way we did quadrant two, except they're going in a different direction.
I'm going to go ahead and put those together. Now the last piece to make the second wing. All right, so that is quadrant three. Now I'm gonna make quadrant four. So quadrant four is the kitty cats that had the pieces added to either side. And then, <clears throat> sorry, a four and a half inch square and a six and a half inch, or rectangle, and a six and a half inch rectangle. So we're gonna add that four and a half inch rectangle first to the square. Make sure you're doing it to the right side of the square and that the cream is touching the cream on the upper right hand corner. Sorry about the little coughs and sniffles. It is allergy season here in Ohio and I definitely have fall allergies. <laughs> My husband gets them in the spring and I get them in the fall, so. But we were sitting outside tonight and for just a few minutes and it was really beautiful, so it's worth the allergies. <laughs> How is the weather by all of you? By me, it's starting to still warm during the day, but starting to cool off at night, which I really love. I love when it's cool at night to sleep. And funny that we're making bats because we're starting to see bats fly around as well. Okay, so that is quadrant four, and we are going to add quadrant three, or get quadrant four to quadrant three, just like this. So make sure your black cats are touching the small two and a half inch square. So there is quadrant three and four put together. So I'm gonna add this to the top of the bat. Look, we almost have that. <laughs>
trust this guy. So there is bat B. Well, as you can see, we've got quite a collection going on here behind us now. We've got log cabin blocks and a pumpkin block. And we've got bat blocks. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this week. I sure did. I think the bats are adorable. We need to make four of those of both A and B. So I've made two. So I've got to get my homework done and make two more of each one. And then next week we will make another block and then the following week will be the finish. So a couple more weeks to go and we'll have a finished quilt top. Yay, I'm so excited. This is going really well. It's turning out really cute and I can't wait to see how all of this fits together. So we've got quite a few pieces going on. So it'll be interesting to see how the bats and the pumpkins and the log cabins all fit together and then whatever we're making next week. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for stopping by, for watching, and hopefully sewing with me. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.